good to welcome you all this morning, those of you that are online and those of you that are here uh, in person. It's good to see you all this morning. So I'm sure we're going to be in for an absolutely super awesome time. You know, it was good that three people last Sunday gave their hearts and made decisions to the Lord, and that was really, really good. And we want to see more of that in our service. We want to see more of that in church, where people are coming to know him, where people are getting saved, where this church is going to be full of people that are new Christians, and we just need, we need to pray for that, that God will just continue to move now in what is started. He started something last Sunday and we've been praying for such a long time and we've been saying that we want to see the church grow. We want to see evangelism take place and things like that. Last Sunday was the start and we just want to see that continuing. You know, just continuing and continuing. So let's just open in prayer and then we'll just hand you over to the, uh, to the worship team. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that Lord, you are an amazing God, Lord. And Lord, you want everybody in this world, Lord, to know you. And Lord, I just pray right now that you will just move by your spirit this morning, Lord. I just pray for those online that you'll just bless them, Lord. That you'll just put your loving arms around them, Lord. And for those that are in the church building today, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you'll move right now as we praise and we worship you and we give you the praise and the thanks for everything that you're doing, Lord. In each and every one of our hearts and lives and in this church, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning. Do you want to stand? John, I'm hoping you like this. I hope so. <laughs> I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and Nothing but the 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. He died for me on Calvary. Such is the love of Jesus. Crucified to set me free. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, sing it joyfully. Jesus has died for me. A sinner now set free. Such is the love of Jesus. Oh, sing it joyfully. Jesus has died for me. A sinner now set free. Such is the love of Jesus. Oh, sing it joyfully. Jesus has died for me. A sinner now set free. Such is the love of Jesus. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh. 
to him now, all of yourself. Not, don't hold anything back. Everything now, look into his eyes and say, you can have it, Lord. You can have everything I have. You can have my time. You can have my everything I have, all my talents. Lord, you can have me. Lord, today I'm going to change. Today I'm going to turn away from everything Today I'm going to turn away from what I want to do, what I selfishly want to do, to what you want me to do. Today I'm going to help others instead of helping myself. Today I'm going to stop and help that poor person who needs help. I'm not going to be the one that walk, walks past. Even if it hurts me to help them, Lord, I'm going to change. I'm going to give it all to you this day, now. I lay it at your feet now. Tiana, Tiara, Knoya, Tarishmi, Akadere, and Tiara, and Tia, Knoya, Tia, Aranoya, Tara, Knoya, Tishmi, Akadere, and Tia, Amoya, Kadere, and Tia. To you, I surrender to you. Cheers. 
You're going to need to wait for the band to lead the next song. You speak your words, speak your prayers up to the Lord, because he's here and he's listening. There's Thank healing you, in Lord. this place. There's healing in this yes, place. Lord. Take it now. Just take your healing. Touch where you need healing. Touch where you need healing. Take the healing you need. He's touching you now. He's touching you now. Jesus is walking through this place. Take what you need now, pain free, lungs that breathe, pain just gone, in Jesus name, healing of broken hearts, healing of past relationships, forgiveness. just think while we're in the presence of God this morning while you're bringing your needs to him you know yeah Jesus died on the cross didn't he to forgive us for our sins but we can also leave everything at the foot of the cross we can leave our concerns we can leave our illnesses we can leave the families that are not Christians this morning you know it's not just about Jesus dying on the cross for the forgiveness of sins but it's what we can leave at the foot of the cross this morning and as Mel was saying you know we can bring our needs we can bring our hurts because God wants to touch us he died on the cross for a reason and that was to meet each and every one of our needs this morning and so while you're just praying and while you're just lifting those needs to God in prayer I just think it'd be a good time to think about the cross, to think, think about the sacrifice that Jesus made. Not only that we can have our sins forgiven, but that we can be set free from illnesses, we can be set free from the things that are, bear, uh, that are tearing us down, that are keeping us oppressed. Jesus died on the cross for freedom freedom from pain he died on the cross for freedom from financial situations he died on the cross for all that as well as our sins so just while we're just in this time of quietness now and prayers and worship I just think it would be good if you just want to take the communion this morning you know Jesus shared that didn't he and he said that you know when he brought the bread he said, take and eat it. He said, take and eat it. Because this is my body broken for you. You know, in the Bible it says that by my stripes you are healed. And if you're wanting healing this morning, by my stripes you are healed. The fact that he went to the cross. And then when he took the cup and he said this is my blood shed for you yeah his blood was shed to forgive us for our sins but it was also shed because he wants us to put our faith and trust in him that he can heal us that he can change our hearts he can change our lives so whatever we're going through this morning 
whatever you're praying to God for, whatever you're seeking God for this morning, is worthy of our praise, is worthy of our worship this morning. And so if you've got needs, whatever they are, when you're taking the bread and when you're taking the wine, just continue to allow God to move through you, through healing, to move through any wrong things that maybe you've done that where you need forgiveness. Because Jesus died, not just for our sins, but he died that we can leave everything at the foot of the cross and just cast your burdens onto him this morning as you take the communion and the emblems right now. Lord, I just pray and I just thank you, Lord, that as we take these emblems right now, that, Lord, you will just move by your spirit. Lord, those people that, Lord, are wanting a touch from you, that are wanting a healing from you, that are just wanting to be hugged this morning, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you will just, Lord, by your stripes, just heal them, Lord. Lord, that we can just leave our burdens at the foot of the cross this morning. As Mel was saying, there's lots of things that we can leave at the foot of the cross. And so I just pray and I just ask that right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that, Lord, you just sent your son Jesus to do that for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just allow God to speak this morning. Help him to reveal. Lord, ask him to reveal where you need him in your heart, in your life, in your situations. If you want a touch, or you want healing, or you want God to heal you, or you've got an issue or a problem, I just feel that God wants to just move in those situations this morning. So what I want you to do is I just want you to raise your hand. I don't want you to come to the front or anything like that. I just want you to raise your hand if you've got a need this morning, if you want a healing, if you want a touch this morning. And then... The members of the church are going to just look around and I just want you where you're sitting, if you want to stand, you can stand, but just raise your hand to that person and just pray for them. Just pray that God will heal, that God will just move in their situations right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now for those hands that are raised, Lord. For those hands that are raised, that need a healing, that need a touch, that just need you to work through a situation right now, Lord. Lord, as we've brought bread and we've 
drunk the wine, Lord. Lord, I just pray right now that as that bread and that wine just goes down the throats, Lord, goes into the stomachs, Lord, goes through the body, Lord, that you will just touch each and every person that has got their hand raised this morning, Lord. Just do a work in them, Lord, this morning, I pray. Because you want to heal people this morning. You want to touch people this morning. You want to start working through people's problems this morning, people's situations this morning. We sing that song, don't we? We don't always see you working, but you are working. And you are working through situations that we can't see with our physical eyes, Lord. But Lord, you know what those needs are, and you're working through those needs. We just need to have the faith. I just pray right now that you will give those people that have got their hands raised the faith to believe that you are working through their situations, that you are starting to heal those sicknesses, that you are starting to um, just ease that pain, Lord, right now. Because, Lord, by your stripes we're healed. And I just declare that right now over each and every person that needs healing. And Lord, you went around and you did lots of, lots of different things. You spoke into people's hearts and lives, Lord. And I just pray that right now, Lord. Just pray that right now for the people that need you, that need you, Lord. Those online as well, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, you'll just bless them, Lord. Lord, they're not physically here this morning, but Lord, you're working through their situations as well, Lord. And so we just, we just pray and we just ask that right now. In the name of Jesus, just be glorified in everything that you're doing, in each and every one of our lives, Lord, right now. Hallelujah. Well, everybody, hallelujah. That was lovely this morning. It's lovely. Every, it was good this morning. It's good to sing the old songs, isn't it, from time to time. Anyway, I really feel this morning that I'm standing here because Andy's convening the service. But, you know, there's people here, you've been extremely discouraged. Really, really discouraged. And I think that could apply to most people here. At times, we're all discouraged, aren't we? But th there's been an acute discouragement in your life. And I believe, even to the extent where you've said, I wonder if God still loves me and God still cares for me and he's still concerned about me. And I really feel this morning God wants to lift that off you because it's a lie from the devil. It's a lie from the pit. And, um, and you know, God has redeemed you. Jesus has redeemed you. He's bought you. And uh, we've all got flaws in our lives. Every one of us here. There's nobody who hasn't. But... He loves us with an everlasting love. And he'll never leave us. He'll never leave you. He'll never leave you. As long as you cling on to him and you put your trust in him. And when those discouragements come, like Nehemiah, when he tried to build the wall, discouragement came. Was it Sanballat and Tobiah and somebody else? And they said, you're never going to do anything. Even if a fox ran across that wall, it would be destroyed. But he got on with the job. And you know, friends, you get on with the job of building your life with God. Because God has got great things for you. He really has. If you'll take him at his word, if you'll trust him, if you'll step out by faith and take it from him, God will use you because you've got a heart for God. If you've got, some of you have, and if you haven't got a heart for God, ask him to give you a greater desire for himself. Amen. But these discouragements, or this, 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 um, this discouragement that came to you because of an issue, because of something that happened recently, God wants to lift that from you this morning. Let him take it off you. It's of the past. Amen. And get on with your life. Get on trusting the Lord and serving the Lord and, and be strong in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, John. That is so true, isn't it? You know, we need to get on with it. Just get on with it. And God will have control and just take control of everything by just getting on with it, plodding on. And one of my favorite sayings is you just carry on regardless because I know that God has got everything in control. Is there any notices? Have we got some notices? 
Okay, okay, we've got a lot of notices this morning, so I'll. Uh, okay, um, just on the back of what Andy was saying, we have a few prayer requests. So some people may know that Jason and Liz are on holiday. Sadly, they do have COVID. So we're going to pray in a minute for Jason and Liz and anybody else who's been ill. Who knows? Put your hand up if you know someone who's got COVID right now. Just so we know. Jason. <laughs> well, let's just pray for Jason and Liz and I'll just do the notices. So, Father, we thank you for Jason and Liz and we thank you for all they do to pour into this community, Lord. And we just pray for divine healing and protection over them in Jersey right now. We just pray for your peace, Lord, because it's so difficult to be ill and away from home. So we just pray for your peace to just surround them and they would know your presence with them. They'd know your healing. And the symptoms would immediately lift in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray for all those that we know who have COVID or had COVID. We pray for quick recovery. We pray for quick healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you that by your stripes we are healed. So we just declare that over every person we know who's not well, with COVID or not COVID, we just thank you that you know everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so the Bible says prayer works. And so tomorrow night we are resuming our prayer and worship here. It will not be live streamed, so we do encourage you, if you can, come down to the building for 7.30. So that'll, that'll restart tomorrow. Um, where's my husband? So, sorry, I didn't warn you this. Um, so the, <laughs> this time last year, me and Ben were planning to get married in the middle of a very crazy lockdown, wasn't it? Um, so next weekend, we are having a wedding blessing here at three o'clock. Everyone's invited. If you could let me or Ben know by tomorrow, tomorrow or Tuesday. Everyone's invited. Everyone's invited, but for food, <laughs> if you'd like to be fed, let me know. Um, we could do with some help on Friday to help move chairs and tables around. So if anyone's free just for half an hour, please let us know and we can get that sorted. Saturday. The Sunday is the actual anniversary. The Saturday is the wedding blessing. Thanks, Dan. That's a good point, isn't it? Um, so also, next Sunday is another exciting day. Wall's End is restarting. Um, so we've been planning in for months and months now just to get Wall's End restarting in person and we can actually do it next week. So please pray for Mike and the whole team going to Wall's End that God would move amongst that community. They need a touch from God. And uh, yeah, let's continue to thank God. Pardon? 12th. Next Sunday, because Andy's talking. John, you can you can come along whenever you want to come. <laughs> so from the twelve. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I think that's all the notices for now. That's great. John, uh, Andy, Andy and Jackie Anderson, who used to come here, and uh, Andy died. He died um, about four days ago. So it'd be good if you could pray for Jackie. Jackie, I'm going to do the funeral service. I don't know when that's going to be. But um, if you could pray for Jackie. Andy's a lovely, lovely Christian guy. Love God. Known him for a lot of years. And uh, if we could just think of uh, Jackie, his wife at this time, and the family. Um, his son's a worship leader in another church. So he's going to be leading the worship, the singing, and whatever, um, at the funeral service. But obviously... Um, they need prayer at, at this time. Shall I just have a little prayer? Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we come into your holy presence in the lovely name of Jesus, your Son. And we thank you, Lord God of heaven, that you hear our prayers. You love us with an everlasting love. And Lord, we thank you for, for Andy Anderson, who's gone to be with you. And we thank you for his life. And we thank you, Lord, that he loved you. 
and he's with you and he shall be with you forever. But Lord, we pray for his family, his friends, and those who loved him the most, that uh, at this time, Lord, you'll give them your comfort and your strength and your blessing. In Jesus' name, glorify your name, Lord, we pray. At the funeral service, pray, Lord, any unconverted people present will hear the word of God and put their trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. So if interfering too much today, I shouldn't talk. Well, that's fine. That's good. So uh, John Moore sent some things through as well. Um, it's called Mission 24 Impact Training. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, it's from Wednesday the 8th to Sunday the 12th of September, um, 2021, time at 7 p.m. And, it's, and the location is the Double Tree by Hilton, Newcastle International Airport. So if you're interested in that, it is £30, um, but you get a, a training manual and everything for that as well. So if you're interested in that and you want the uh, contact details, I'm just going to see me. Um, yeah, yes, it is. Yep, that's him. Okay. <laughs> so Jonathan Conrad as well, yeah, and his team. So uh, that should be, should be really good, some good training there. So, yeah, it's good that we can... Um, have Simon with us this morning. Okay, so he's going to bring the word to us. So if you want to come forward, pray for you, and then it's over to you. Excellent. Yes, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, for Simon, Lord, that you will just move by your spirit, Lord, as he brings your word to us this morning, Lord. And I just pray right now that you will just move, Lord, in each and every one of our lives, Lord, that, Lord, we will just be inspired by what Simon's got to say to us this morning, Lord. And so I just pray that you'll bless us and just bless Simon right now, Lord. Just give him the strength, Lord, that he needs as well, Lord, to just preach and speak on what you want him to speak about, Lord, this morning. And we just thank you, Lord, for his recovery from COVID, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that he's here this morning to be able to just share your word. So we ask your blessing on him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody out there? Just. All right, man, I've got to speak up. <clears throat> I can't. You just have to come closer. <coughs> oh, man. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. It seems like it's been forever uh, since I've been in this building uh, and just standing and sitting down there. Um, so I've not got a great amount of energy at the moment. I'm still recovering from that. Um, but just to hear all these voices singing in unison, uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, and it's not the same, I'll admit, <coughs> when I was watching um, last week, um, sat in bed, uh, such as the luxuries of being not very well, um, sat in bed listening and watching the service. Um, it's not the same. Um, so if you're online listening, get down here. Uh, you're missing out. Uh, thank you again as well for all your prayers uh, for myself and uh, family in Elder uh, and for Ellie as well and the kids. Um, apparently, um, Imelda and Ellie have been quite worried about me. Uh, I'm not, but you know, that's just me. That's just what I do. <coughs> um, but Ellie had been saying that she's been really worried about me because uh, I spent most of the time because I just had no energy at all, just with my eyes shut. And she was just then looking at me. I'm watching my chest, just making sure it's going up and down sort of thing. And is he going to open his eyes again? And I was just like, just needed to rest. Uh, that's been one of the weird things about having COVID. Um, there's been the, uh, the lack of energy uh, that, that I've had, if you like. Um, I've felt like I could have done a run or a cycle, but I just couldn't. Um, for some reason, I just had no energy. It's been really bizarre. Um, but it's coming back uh, slowly. Like I say, I'm not quite there yet. I'll, I'll pay for this later on. Um, but I'm willing to, you know. Um, and when Mike asked me to preach <coughs> today, um, 
I'd already had a word of, of what to say. Uh, and you, you sort of, as a preacher, you sort of question in a way, is that right? Is that what God wants me to speak about? But I can safely say um, from what's happened, well, I'm in the room now, um, from what's gone on this morning, that that's the right word that God wants me to speak about. Uh, from what John said just now uh, about love, um, pretty much covered what I was going to say to be fair but I'll go through it again because repetition is good um, it was lovely to have that affirmation um, that this, this is what God wants me to speak about uh, I'm not looking to be too long to get on um, and I apologise for the amount of coughing I'll probably do uh, it won't be quiet um, so I don't do coughing quietly um, so anyway um Talking of love, John three sixteen to 18. You can't get much more simple than that, can you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has already been judged because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Uh, all my readings I've got today, that's the only one that's, if it's up there, yeah, uh, it's going to be on the screen, because I know how much of a distraction words on the screen can be. Um, and I feel like uh, what I've got, got to say, without being big-headed, uh, needs to be heard uh, and is important. <coughs> uh, uh, right. Has anyone, have you ever said, and I know I have, um, who could love someone like me? Or uh, nobody loves me. You know, uh, anyone ever said anything like that? Um, yeah, I know, we all have, haven't we? You know, it just, it just struck me. I'd heard a couple of people say things, uh, and things had been mentioned to me that people have said, and I was like, I think people need to know that there's someone out there who absolutely does love them. Um, uh, a term that my wife um, introduced to me PTSD um, I know it's uh, got a certain meaning to certain people with post-traumatic stress disorder I think um, but it's actually put that stick down you know, stop beating yourself up with that stick PTSD put it down you know it's, it's not what you should be doing um, so God, God wants me to remind us of something just a little something um, that he loves us So, is there anyone out there who does love you? Yes, yes there is. God loves you so much that he decided with everything he created that he needed and wanted to have you and me too. He formed you especially. Psalm 139 says it ever so more beautifully than I ever could. <coughs> you created my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. And that's Psalm 139, verses 13 to 15, and all the readings are from the NASB uh, 2020 ver uh, version. And actually, if you've got a bit of time, read the whole of Psalm 139, because it's, it's a lovely little uh, chapter. Um, I know there's not some... Um, positive things in it that David said but going through it it's just amazing to read uh, such beautiful words from me and the uh, I am awesomely and wonderfully made uh, it's something that I've struggled with uh, over the years um, to get my head round that God thinks that I am awesomely and wonderfully made because I would quite often uh, and I'm trying to shake it but I'm, I quite often think of the uh, uh, who could love someone like me or like nobody loves me but even though I would know that there are people <coughs> who do love me yeah that psalm is a lovely description by King David about the omnipresence and the omniscience of God um, that he knows all things at once and he is present in all time everywhere at once um, which is impossible to get your head round um, don't try I wouldn't recommend it. 
Uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. But then he who had set me apart, even from my mother's womb. So even there, he, he knows you, even before you've popped out. You know, he knows everything about you. And it's just amazing. And it, it is lovely. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5a. And this is talking about Jeremiah, but I think we can apply it to, to us as well. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I've appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, the, the new in that, K-N-E-W, uh, God knew Jeremiah before he was born. Uh, is again going to God's omnipresence and omniscience. Um, he knows everything about you before you were even formed inside your mother's womb, which is astonishing, you know, and that doesn't sound like someone who uh, doesn't care about you, that doesn't love you. He knew every day, he knows every day, knew every day, whatever, um, that lay before you, before you'd even experienced your first. Um, what if he decided, actually, you know that Simon character, uh, he's just going to be so much hassle, I don't know if I can be bothered with him, uh, I'll not bother, you know. For some reason that eludes me, um, God loved me that much that he knew, regardless of what I would spend <coughs> each and every of one of my days doing, uh, he wanted me on this planet. You know, when you look at the entirety of creation, um, the enormity of the universe um, that's still growing and expanding, uh, it's still happening. <coughs> God wanted me on this planet. And, and that applies to everyone in this room and everyone outside of this room. Uh, he wanted you that much on his planet that... Um, tiny planet that is called earth and if you look at the there are some amazing videos on youtube um, that compare the size of the earth with everything that's out there uh, it's tiny it is absolutely tiny when you think about it compared to suns and red dwarfs and other dwarfs and things like that and it's just amazing that this tiny little planet uh, perfectly formed in its own little way um, but god sees significance in me being here when I struggle to see that significance how much does God love us we are actually God's greatest creation he saved the best till last and in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 27 and 31 then God said let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created them male and <coughs> excuse me male and female he created them and God saw all that he had made and behold it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day up until that point God's creation at the end of each day, <coughs> uh, had been good. But on that day that he created mankind, his creation became very good. You know, that's just, it's a, it's a little thing that's easily missed in the Bible. Like so many things are just easily missed in that book. You know, it's like, and God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. And then mankind comes along, regardless of what he knew then that mankind would do to this planet and to each other. He still saw that creation, um, making his creation very good. And I just thought that was just uh, a lovely thing to put, you know, very, very, very good. God loves us enough to discipline us. Yeah, no one likes this bit, do they? Um, I'll try not to dwell on it too long, <coughs> probably. Um, but it's important. Uh, I, I love my kids. Um, 
even the kids that are not my kids, but are my kids, sort of thing, kind of. Uh, yeah, I love them. <coughs> you know, I've taken on three children. The Melbourne's taken on four adults, if you like, but four kids, um, and I love them all. Um, but, you know, they, they do wrong, you know, like we all do wrong. You know, we, we discipline them um, as we see best. But that doesn't mean that I don't love them any less because of it. I might get angry. I get angry. I can't say might. That's a lie. Uh, I get angry. You know, I get annoyed. Uh, I'm just going to use the I'm only human excuse for that one. You know, it happens. Um, but they can't get away. They just can't go scot-free, can they? Um, whatever that means. Scot-free. I did a bit of digging into that, Scott Free, because it just struck me, what does that actually mean? A bit of a tangent, so just follow me for a minute. <coughs> um, Scott was actually um, not a bloke, uh, not a Scotsman. It was actually a Scandinavian word called scat, um, S-K-A-T, which is um, um, mutated, which is a great word, to Scott when it was introduced over here. Uh, and scat meant uh, a type of tax, uh, basically. And then in the 10th, 11th century, um, poorer people would occasionally be let off this scat, this uh, applicable tax. Uh, and you would be termed as being scat free, scot free. So, you know, you got away with paying for something, um, which, you know, is what discipline is. Um, it, it's not about getting away scot free. Uh, discipline has to be invoked. <coughs> uh, and there must be discipline for, for all wrongdoing, even for the Christian. Um, um, again, another, another reading, because the Bible just says it so much better than I ever can. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. Uh, it's a bit of a lengthy one, but I've got loads. Uh, <coughs> You have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. And this is a quote. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are punished by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he punishes every son whom he accepts. End quote. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to, dis to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of Spirits and live? For they, men, for they disciplined, disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems not to be pleasant, but painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, after it, it, afterwards it yields the peace, full fruit of righteousness. Dis uh, God disciplines us for the greater good, you know, because he loves us that much. He just wants us to do good all the time. That's all. And I know we can never, in this body, uh, meet up to God's expectations. We just can't do it. It's impossible, you know. But it's all God wants of us, to be good. He demands perfection. And the only perfection that existed on this earth is Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Messiah. Now, our version of discipline would probably differ from, from that of God's. As it says, we discipline as we think best. God disciplines in the way that he, and if we're honest, knows is the best. God disciplines in the way that he knows is the best. Always for our good, to teach us the right and perfect way. We're much more likely to discipline by tenning off in anger. Like I say, even me. God doesn't want us to stumble 
He wants us to have the victory over everything we can get wrong. God's discipline is to show us when we've gone wrong and guide us in the way of getting it right. This is the job of the, his Holy Spirit, to prod and keep prodding us towards the right and proper way. Convicting us of our sin before we believe in Jesus. Convicting us of our sin after we believe in Jesus. The difference is our attitude toward that convicting. Before being a Christian, uh, one might just brush it off as a yeah, whatever, uh, and carry on with life. You know, but as a Christian, we should absolutely not, we should absolutely want to listen to that convicting and act upon it so as to try our hardest to not do that again. <coughs> Excuse me. No, it, it's, it's a different in that difference in attitude uh, to when we do sin. Because um, I, I can't, I'm, maybe you're completely different to me. Uh, I can't say that since becoming a Christian, I haven't sinned. Um, I can't. Um, that would be a lie, which is a sin. So, you know, I just can't say that. Um, but the, the difference is, you know, rather than just going, done wrong, or whatever, or not even recognizing I've done wrong, just going, well, yeah, whatever. So, you just carry on. Uh, I want to not do it again you know um, it's difficult it is and um, there are things that go off in my life <coughs> that I just keep doing you know and you can sit there and go but I just can't get it right you know just stop it you can get it right and, and personally uh, I'm seeing improvements uh, in areas of my life that I really want to get sorted out. Um, I'm fed up with swearing. <laughs> you know, I've had enough of it. You know, it's it's something that's plagued me, and every time I do it, I'm like, oh man, I've done it again. But you know what? I can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. And every time I swear. Which I know is unbelievable, right? Like, you swear? No, it's true. I swear. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm glad Mike isn't here. He'd probably be up here now, like, get off! <coughs> he does too, so it's all right. <laughs> I can vouch for that. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Where was I? Yeah, stop it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, I can't do it on my own. Uh, I have to say, Jesus, just take this away. I hate it. I hate this aspect of my life uh, that I swear. I hate it. You know, I'm, it's, it's weird. It's, it's probably more often when I'm on my own. Occasionally at work, uh, one will creep out. When I'm on my own, um, uh, it just comes out. It's something I'm working on. Uh, it is a lot better than what it used to be. Uh, I can tell you that. But I pray about it and, and just ask Jesus, God, you know, just help me out with this. I'm really struggling with that. You know, just believe that too. That in, yeah, I'm sure there are things that are going on in your lives that, you know, you could do with a little bit of help from Jesus with. You know, just start believing it, that he can do it. Um, like John said, and like Andy said, just dump it all before Jesus, you know, because he's there waiting uh, for you to just drop it at the cross and leave it. And I know we've got a filthy habit of just going back to that cross, picking it back up again. But no, I can't let it go just yet. No, no, no just leave it. Which I know sounds easy. You know, just leave it at the cross and carry on and it's gone forever. I know it ain't easy. Just keep persevering. I encourage you. Keep persevering. Hashtag keep on keeping on. You know? God loves us enough to not give up on us. You know? He wants us to get on that path. <coughs> to, to do right. You know? to, to rely on him for everything. Uh, and it's maybe it's about time we started doing like the same. 
not giving up on us, not saying, I just can't do it, but saying, you know what? With Jesus, I can do it. Right? Just believe it. How much is God not willing to give up on us? There's a story, not a parable. There's a story in the Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Jesus goes across a lake to a place of Gerasenes or Gerasenes, Gerasenes or whatever you want to call it. A place there. And there's a guy there who's been ostracized by his own people, his own town, um, because he's possessed by multiple demons. I know people don't like to hear that nowadays, but, you know, who knows? Um, so this guy had been forced to live um, just in the rocks, ruins, caves of the area, and no one could go near him. No one could chain him up because he just broke the chains. He was too strong. You know, but Jesus went all that way just for that man who'd been kicked out of town. You know what, Simon, I'm fed up with you living in Morpeth. You're just no good whatsoever. Can't control you. Try and chain you down. <laughs> you just break the chains and you know, run right. Just get out. Just go. We don't want you in Morpeth anymore. Imagine Pegsworth. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no, I don't want to go to Pegsworth. <laughs> I'm sure Pegs was lovely. Stop distracting me. <laughs> Naughty boy. Um, yeah, imagine how you'd feel if you'd been kicked out of where you live. You know, to not go back there again because people didn't like you that much, couldn't handle you, couldn't cope with you. Just go away. But Jesus went for that one in the 99. I don't know how many people lived in that town. It'd be funny if there was 99 people plus one in the ruins. And he went all that way. And he healed that man. That one man. And that's all he did in that area because they wanted him to go because they couldn't handle him. So he went back across the water. All that way just for one man. Who would do such a thing, eh? God loves you so much that it will not whisper by his spirit in your ear, are you sure you're really saved? Are you sure? Are you sure you're saved? Mm, am I? I've been there. Again, you know, don't feel like you're the only one. There's so many times I'd be sat in a congregation with the preacher speaking and be like, whoa. I didn't realize anyone else thought like that. I thought that was just me. Are you sure you're saved? There's only one place those words come from, and it's not God. Those are the words of the deceiver, the accuser, the Satan, you know, the devil, whatever you want to call him. King of liars. He's there just in your ear constantly. Are you sure you're saved? Are you sure you're saved? I'm convinced that I am saved. You know, I've fought that, fought that battle. Am I saved? Simple questions to ask yourself. Do I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for my sins? Do I acknowledge and repent, that is, be sorry for, turn away from doing of my sins? Do I acknowledge and repent of my sins? There you go. Simple. It's easy, isn't it? You're saved. If you can say that like wholeheartedly, um, not just mouth the words, but say it and believe it, you're saved. How easy is that? And yet you're still there in your ear. Are you sure you're saved? Well, yeah, because that's what I believe. I'm saved. It doesn't matter what you've done in past life, murder, who knows? I don't know. Uh, not love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You know, if you've not done that every day, done wrong. Sorry, it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what you've done, how great a sin you think you've done, how little a sin you think you've done, or not think you've done. You know, 
It's that easy. Forgiveness. God loves us enough to die for us. True story. God decided that the only way to save this mankind he had created was to die for it. The only way we could truly get to heaven in God's perfect presence was to have a perfect sacrifice once and for all on which would be placed all sin and all the punishment for that sin. Amen. With the original Old Testament Israelite sacrifices, the sin was only covered. Uh, It was still there, just covered by the blood of unblemished or spotless animals used as offerings over and over again. And if you read through uh, the Old Testament, it'll tell you how many animals were sacrificed and it's quite frightening when you read it how many animals um, sacrificed for all sorts of things you know but it's wow that's a lot of animals these ritual sacrifices had to be carried out regularly but the sin was still there Jesus' death was instead of ours he suffered punishment leading up to his death And when the sin of the world was placed upon him as he hung on that cross, he was left alone by the one whom he had relied upon every day. God's wrath for mankind's sin was poured out on Jesus as he hung on that cross. The only way that sin could once and for all be dealt with, a once for all perfect sacrifice, bearing the once for all punishment and wrath for sin. You know, God cannot be in the presence of sin. You're all right. I've got another two hours. Yeah, you're all right. Plenty of time. (coughs) I'm just getting warmed up. (coughs) No, I've not got two hours. You're right. Don't worry. Um, God cannot be in the presence of sin. I've said this before, but it's true. Um, Now I've, I've, blimey, I've battled with the, the thought of God leaving Jesus alone on the cross. But I'm of the belief that the moment that all that sin and wrath was placed upon Jesus, uh, that, that that moment, God just could not be there because of all that sin, all our sin, all your sin, all my sin was placed on him at that moment. And when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I've done nothing wrong. And yet here I am. I'm alone in the darkness, you know. Well, look at that up there. That is, it's an emotional thing across. If it isn't, make it an emotional thing. Because when you think about what he went through on one of them or a tree, whatever, the Romans used it at the time, you know, it doesn't bear thinking about it. I can only imagine what he went through. And then to have that, that amazing relationship with God the Father and to it just for a moment be taken away. Oh, man, punishment enough, isn't it? And yet even in that moment, it gives us a glimpse of uh, a world or, you know, an eternity uh, without God. Um, which is a thing for people who uh, are not Christian, who don't believe. You know, no beating about the bush. Sorry, I don't do that. If you're not saved, uh, you have an eternity um, without God, um, which from what the Bible says, isn't a fun place to be. It's not what the world would have you believe. But you no, know, it's just fun and all sorts of stuff goes on there. No, it, it's a horrible place. I wouldn't recommend it as a holiday destination. Jesus then follows up these words with more words that should encourage us all and bring such a smile to our faces. It is finished. It is finished. Thank God that he did it. <coughs> That even though he was in that garden of Gethsemane saying, if there's any other way, just 
let it be. But even so, I'm going to do this because these people are worth it. It is finished. The price is paid. The punishment has been taken. You know, you, if you're not saved, you don't need to be punished. Like I said, two simple statements about believing. You know, they're simple, but they are some of the most difficult things to do, to actually believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for you. It's a toughie. Jesus willingly died, willingly gave up his own spirit for us. Willingly, because he loved us that much. And I read something the other day and I thought, wow, that's just amazing. It's only one sentence. Humble yourself by the one before the one, sorry, humble yourself before the one who loves you more than he loved his own life. That's amazing, isn't it? Who here could, could have done what Jesus did? You know, people say, oh, he was the son of God. You know, he was Jesus. He could do anything. He was a human. At the end of the day, he bled like us. You know, hurt like us, cried like us, loved like us. Mm -hmm. Had compassion like us. I don't think I could have gone through with it, if I'm being honest. I'm so glad he did. If he hadn't, I don't know where we'd be right now. So, nearly there. As we are made in God's image and likeness, shouldn't we try to act like him? You know, as Christian, the good Samaritan, which one are we? Now, Imelda showed us a, a lovely reading this morning about the good Samaritan. I was like, whoa, got to say something about that. So I added it in this morning, so sorry, a bit longer. Bear with me. Try and stay awake. The priest or the Levite, who should know what to do and yet don't. They think of how much it will cost them if they get involved. Whereas the Samaritan considers how much it will cost this guy on the side of the road if he doesn't get involved. Which one are you? I'm being honest and probably say I'm the priest or the Levite most of the time. <coughs> there are times when I see situations, I see people and I'm like, nah, sorry, I just can't do that. You know? Whereas Jesus broke through every barrier and spoke to whoever. Mm, shame on me. Yeah, shame on me. I know where I'm at. I wish I was the Samaritan. And sometimes I am the Samaritan. But a lot of the time, I'm the priest or the Levite. Where are you at? The world watches us as Christians more than you'd probably realize. Um, and we hear the stories of people at work and, you know, they're watching you because they know what you're about. But you'd be surprised how much... Um, non-Christians know about the Christian world you know because it's quite often banded about it's not very Christian is it you know so be careful in your work life in your life in general people are watching you even though you're probably not even aware of it we're on trial every day it's it's not an easy life being a Christian okay I'll get that out there People think it's all uh, happy, clappy, uh, you know, big, fluffy God, you know, lovely lad. You know. The Christian life is not an easy one. Just read through a bit of early church history, uh, throughout history, even now. Crikey, it's going on in the world now, isn't it? Um, people um, have been and are being punished unbelievably. 
They're just believing that Jesus is the Son of God. What sense does that make? You know, we are so blessed over here. Uh, we might get ridiculed a bit for being a Christian, fun poked at us, whatever. But we're not waiting for someone to come through that door with a gun, are we? You know, we're not waiting to be carted off to prison, which is happening in some countries. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. And yet, even through that, they're showing love. Those people that are persecuted in the world. How can we expect to win the lost for God if we don't act like him? Showing love, even to the difficult ones, Christians included. I'm no angel. I get that. There are people that I'm not keen on. You know, it's, it is what it is. I'm not proud of it. And again, that's something else through Christ that I'm working on. You know, but let's just get out there. Show a bit of this love. You know, because so much love has been afforded to us um, with Christ's death. You know, does he not deserve at least that? So, how much does God love us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father, God, but through him. And I love how simply Peter puts it in Acts. Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 36 to 38. The end of a, a wonderful sermon by Peter. Um, when the people think that these Christians are drunk at what, nine in the morning, something like that. That's pretty good going, to be fair. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, apostles even, brothers, what are we to do? Peter said to them, repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. And again in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. There's no doubt, not might, you may. You will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth they confess, resulting in salvation. God is good. God is love. You must truly believe. And if you haven't made that decision, you really want to. Truly believe. You can't just fob God off with words. He knows, he knows this intimately. Every little thing. This heart beating away, this head. He knows it all inside out. He knows exactly what you're thinking. You cannot mock him. He will know whether you really believe or not. Please just make that decision today. I urge you, wherever you are, here, there, wherever. And as us Christians go out and be love for the sake of Christ. Okay? Thank you. For that word thanks for that word Simon and I just think it would be good to just focus on what Simon said right now and if you're online or if you're in church and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior then now is the time to do it we took communion this morning didn't we and we said that we could leave everything at the foot of the cross 
Yeah, we can leave our sins, we can leave our issues, we can leave our problems at the foot of the cross this morning. Oh, as Simon said as well, if you don't feel that you're walking right with God at the moment, if there's things in your heart, yeah, you're a Christian, you've made that decision. If you just need to just ask God to forgive you, then I'm just going to pray. And I'm just going to ask everybody to close their eyes. And if you want to be a Christian this morning, or you just want to ask God to forgive you for something, or some things that you, you, you're not quite walking with God this morning, then while I'm praying, just put your hand up. And if you're online this morning, and you want to give your heart to the Lord, or if you've got issues and problems, why don't you just get the church number, give the church a ring. If there's nobody there, just leave a message. And we will get back to you. And we will talk to you. And somebody will lead you to the Lord. So if you're watching online, you can do exactly the same. But just let us know. Okay, just by phoning the church or texting the church or if you know somebody in the church. Just let us know that you've made that decision to follow him. Or you just need some help for God to just work in and work through some things that, you know, you're going through at the moment. Hallelujah. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that, Lord, you would just move by your spirit. That, Lord, if there's anyone here, this morning, Lord, that needs to know you, whether in the building or whether they're online. Lord, I just pray right now that you will just help them, Lord. Just forgive them for the wrong things that they've done, Lord. Because, Lord, you died on the cross to save each and every one of us. And I just pray, Lord, that if there's Christians here this morning that aren't quite walking right with you, Lord, I just pray right now that, Lord, you will just open up their hearts, Lord. Just reveal to them, Lord, where they're going wrong. And I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, you will just come into their hearts, Lord. You will just work through those situations, Lord, where they're not walking for you. Just those little things, Lord. And it might only be small things, but, Lord, I just pray right now that, Lord, you will move in their hearts and their lives, Lord. That, Lord, they can fully know you. That they can stand before you on judgment day and you'll get that pat on the back and they'll get that pat on the back and we'll get that pat on the back, Lord, and it's well done, you good and faithful servant. And so I just thank you for the word this morning. And I just thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you died on the cross that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And so I just pray, Lord, right now, that you'll just move by your spirit. Just guide us, just lead us, Lord. Just reveal, Lord, the wrong things that we do, Lord. Just reveal, Lord, where we need you, where we need a touch from you. And I just pray and I just ask it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So there is tea and coffee in the back if you're here. Okay, If you're online, you can go and make yourselves a cup of coffee, put the kettle on, you know, just have some fellowship and, you know, just uh, give somebody a phone call. There you go. You can have fellowship that way. You don't have to be in church. You can just pick the phone up and say, hi, how are you doing? Great to see you. I'm just having a cup of coffee. Are you having a cup of coffee? So, you know, even online, you can still have that fellowship. Okay, thank you. Oh, can you also um, just put the chairs to the side as well and just strap them for us, please, as well, just for, um, for jelly beans uh, tomorrow.